What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. That's smkw.com. And, uh, folks, today we've got another episode of EDC with TC. You guys have been really enjoying this series. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be going over my five favorite EDC knives as of late. So the five knives that I have been carrying recently, and I mean over the last few months, and actually using and actually putting to work. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, this is just the one I use and carry for pocket jewelry. No, these are knives that are actually getting work in. Um, I've got a lanyard on a couple of these. You can tell the lanyards are worn. Um, that's not because they've been dangling just outside my pocket. That's because I've been using these. Um, whether I'm working on the house, working on the barn, um, whether I'm out in the yard working on something, uh, working on the car, working on my motorcycle. Um, these are knives that are actually getting work on a daily basis. Whether I'm, you know, if I'm in the barn working on some horses, um, tack, that kind of thing. So these are knives that I've actually been using, and they are going to all run the gamut of, of price range. So we're going to start off here. It's going to go from $699 to uh, almost $500 um, for these five knives. And uh, I'm going to go over each one of them, tell you what I like about each one of them, and uh, tell you why I've been carrying them and, and what I've enjoyed about them. So, housekeeper. if you like this video, you got to smash that thumbs up button. You have no idea how much it helps us. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us across all social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. We've got some really cool stuff going on with TikTok right now. And um, you're going to see all of our updates when we have big events here at the store and when we go to big events like Blade Show West coming up and like Georgia Bushcraft Fall Gathering coming up as well. So we've got some really cool stuff coming up. Um, also fundraisers that we do. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we do uh, for our local community um, kind of goes unnoticed. And we're going to be posting some more of that uh, in, in the coming months um, as well because we, we really enjoy getting to give back to the community here and that's something that really means a lot to us. Now, um, also, while you're following us, ring the notification bell right here on YouTube so that you know when we drop new videos. It'll give you a notification uh, saying, hey, guess what? SMKW just put out a really cool new video. You need to go see what it is. It might be something you might be interested in. So, um, without further ado, let's light these five up. All right. So, we've got five knives here. And yes, I counted correctly, five. And these are the five that I've been carrying the most. These are the five that have found it into my EDC rotation the most lately. And they're all knives that I carry and actually use. Not just conversation pieces, not just pretty knives. Knives that I actually carry and use, all right? And first up, we're going to go in order of price and in order of value. Um, so we're going to start off on the low end with our USGI Jack right here. Now, I am really, really digging this knife. This thing is super cool, and it's coming in at $699. $699. You absolutely can't beat that. This is a phenomenal value for that. Now, as of right now, I don't think we have these in stock, but I wanted to show it off because we definitely will be getting these back in. Um, but we also do have our USGI utility knife as well, which is going to, you know, kind of fall in the same category. So this is that Marbles GI Jack folder right here. Now, this one has a 2.25 inch sheep's foot blade. And it's got the one and a half inch can opener. And uh, also doubles as a bottle opener, a cap lifter. Um, and I tell you what. So this one's coming in at 0 0.06 inches thick, uh, 3.25 inches closed, and 3.6 ounces. So it's nice and hefty for its size. It fits in the hand really nice. Um, and I'll tell you what I really, really like about it. Um, 
it's for one, the sheep's foot blade works really well, especially when I'm working around the house. Lately, my wife and I have been doing a lot of projects where we've been doing flooring and that kind of thing um, and drywall. This blade shape, I prefer when it comes to uh, whether I'm cutting drywall, cutting flooring um, to size for a room or something like that. Um, I love this blade shape as a work blade for doing projects like that, um, doing home renovations. It comes in handy more often than any other blade shape, and I really, really love the power that I can get behind that cut. And this is a perfect size, too. I also, for that specific purpose, love the bail on the back here. I've got a carabiner on my tool belt, and I can just clip it on that carabiner when I need it. Just unclip it, got it right there, and it's ready to go. Also, another thing that I really like is that if I'm using it around the house, it's got this end right here, which can be used as a pry tool. That works perfectly, especially with how it's offset from each side to open up paint cans and uh, to do anything that I need to do with a pry tool as it pertains to something like that. This has been a, a phenomenal and a very um, invaluable tool for me, uh, especially working around the house. I'm really loving this knife. Um, and for the price of six ninety nine. dollars you absolutely can't beat it. Also, like I said, check out that Marbles uh, USGI utility knife. Um, that's another good one, as well as the GI Hawkbill. Um, those are all really great installments from our Marbles line that are very valuable tools for the uh, little amount that you pay for them. Um, that's a phenomenal one right there, and that's been one of my favorites. Moving on up the line... Next up is going to be one that's um, special and emotional for me. Um, now, at the end of last year, when Mari brought these to us, um, I was already a big fan of copper locks from Case. Those were the ones that I collect the most. They're my favorite pattern. Um, I've got a couple of favorites, but, you know, I like the Seahorse Whittler. I also like the copper locks as well. Um I like the single blades. Um, that's just what I've I've come to know and love. Um, and I like how slim it is, how easy it is to carry. This one in particular, so I bought two of them when we first got the Zippo Copper Locks from Case. And I bought two of them. I bought um, the Jig Bone for myself. And then I bought the Patriotic Cure Knight for my dad for Christmas, this past Christmas. Um... And uh, I really enjoyed carrying that um, that jig bone. But then when my dad passed away in, in February, uh, I got this one back, and, and I was very surprised. So he only had a month to carry this, not even. He, he um, went into the hospital and had only carried this for um, two or three weeks, and it was already showing some decent wear. So he was actually um, carrying it and using it as I wanted him to. Um, that's what I told him. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of knives that I want you to put away that are collectibles that are really nice. But this one is one that I want you to actually use. This is a really cool knife and it's going to be, it's going to fall right in there with the kind of knives that you like. Um, and so he started carrying this one and this was the last knife that he carried. And, um, so when I got it back from him, I started carrying it um, more as a sentimental piece, but I have come to really appreciate this as a work knife for me um, for a couple of reasons. I like the style of it anyways. Um, it's always been one of my favorite patterns, but also the fact that it's a lock back at the same time um, being a traditional folder. Um, I like that. It's got the long pulls. I like that. I like how easy it sharpens up. Um, I like that it's a good looking knife. Um, so we're going to take a look at that one up close right there. So this one, um, it comes in at forty nine ninety nine. Now we've still got a few of the copper locks from Zippo in stock. This one, I don't think we have any more, um, but we do have a few of the copper locks in stock. Check those out. They're all going to be under 50 bucks, which is a great, great deal coming out of the case factory, coming in with the true sharp surgical steel blade. Um, on that clip point, got the nice swedge out there on that clip point too, making it look really, really nice. It's got the Zippo shield. It is the lock back. 
and the patriotic kieranite handles with brass pins and liners nickel silver bolsters nickel silver on the zippo shield it's uh, 3.62 inches closed and weighs in just two ounces so super lightweight um, and I usually carry this as a fifth pocket carry. So this goes in that fifth pocket. Um, every pair of pants that I own, um, it has a fifth pocket big enough to fit this knife and, uh, just locks right in place. And that sound, I just love the way these copper locks sound when they lock into place. It snaps really nice, really crisp. And, um, I really dig that knife. Not only is it special to me, but I actually enjoy this knife, and it's it's very comfortable and very easy to use, um, and it, it really means a lot to me. So I really, really like that knife. Staying kind of, uh, you know, not intentionally, but in that same vein is going to be uh, the next knife, and that's going to be our case exclusive here, Marilla, uh, that we released at Blade Show. And uh, this is in MagnaCut, and... Um, this one has been uh, a, a nice workhorse for me. I've I've really used this one, um, sharpened it up a couple of times, few times, and uh, really really dig this thing. Now, um, the knives that I use, I do take care of. I do keep clean. Um, after I use them, after I get done working, I always clean them up. That's that's part of my ritual, part of my routine. Um, usually, at the end of the day, if I'm if I'm using a knife a lot that day. Um, I will actually go, even if it's just my Leatherman, um, I'll actually go, you know, when I get done working and after I take my shower and all that stuff, that's kind of my wind down. What I'll do is I'll get my knife care kit. I'll get my oil out. I'll get my, um, you know, KPL, I'll get my sharpener and, uh, I'll go to town with my cleaning cloth and I'll clean it all up, sharpen the blade up. And I always keep my blades sharp like that. Um, it's it's kind of uh, therapeutic and uh, kind of cathartic. I, I love um, taking care of my blades and blade maintenance. And uh, this has been one that um, I've really, I, I've definitely used. And uh, it's it, this one has um, been put through the ringer. So we're going to take a look at this one, go over the specs on this knife. Now, this is the Case Marilla with the Nebula Fat Carbon SMKW Exclusive. Coming in at $149.99. Um, coming in with the Magna Cut stainless steel on that drop point blade. 3.4 inches long. It is a frame lock. Has the blue anodized aluminum handles with that Nebula Fat Carbon inlay. It is 4.75 inches closed and weighs just 3.6 ounces. And, um, I mean, just great ergonomics on that blade right there. I really dig it. I've really been enjoying this one and haven't had any problems out of it. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've cut quite a bit of stuff with this and, uh, really been loving how that Magna cut performs. That's been, uh, that's been one of my favorite steels as of late. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, with how much I love S 35 and steels like that, it's been, um, difficult for any steel to come and get that out of my hands. But, uh, Magna cut has been, doing a phenomenal job and uh, I'm really really digging that knife right there next up has been one of the newer knives that I've gotten um, I got this one about two and a half months ago and uh, really been carrying it a lot um, really as soon as this knife came in I knew that it was right up my alley and so this is the Benchmade mini bug out in the carbon fiber and the S90V on the blade steel. This is another one that I've been carrying a lot lately. And it's mainly been, it, you know, I started carrying this one mainly because of how lightweight it was and because of how small it was. It's slim profile, um, it's lightweight, and it's one of those that I enjoy playing with. And I know that sounds weird, but that's that's part of what I look at when I, when I look at the knives that I pick to EDC. Um, because, I mean, whether I'm uh, passing the time sitting at my desk reading a document or, uh, you know, needing to do some research, watching a video, um, or if I'm going down the road in my car, I'll sit there and I'll just, you know, 
fidget flick my knives. Um, that's, that's my fidget toy right there. And, uh, that's how I keep myself occupied. And, um, this has been one of those that that's the reason I originally started carrying it. And the reason why it stayed in my pocket is because of how useful it has been as a knife. So, um, it has definitely earned a spot in my, uh, most carried knives right there. Um, very simple design, um, very simple make, uh, and I just, I absolutely love this knife. It's been one of my favorites. I love how lightweight it is. Let's take a look at that one up close and go over its specs. Now you'll notice that I have put a lanyard on this one um, with a lanyard bead. I uh, got this one out of our custom shop. Um, and then I made the lanyard myself, got the bead out of our custom shop, made the lanyard myself. And um, doesn't really match that great um, when you look at the blue, but... I mean, it works for me, and I like it. Um, I'm kind of quirky like that. So this one's coming in at uh, $270. Uh, this is the Benchmade Mini Bug Out in carbon fiber. It features a 2.82-inch drop point S90V stainless steel blade with the satin finish. It is a manual folder with ambi thumb studs and, of course, the axis lock with the dual Omega Springs. The handles are black carbon fiber with anodized blue accents on... Uh, the backspacer and on the dual uh the ambi thumb studs and uh it's got the mini deep carry pocket clip as well um now like i said i really dig this i like the size of the lanyard tube on this um, because i do like carrying knives with lanyards um it helps me realize know that they're still there and it also helps me spot them, too, because a lot of the stuff that I carry is going to be black, gray, um, tan, stuff that blends in, typically. So most of the time what I'll do is I will have a lanyard on there that is a lot more loud in, um, in colorization. So um, that's been another one that I've been carrying quite a bit lately, um, especially if I'm going out um, or going to the office to work here or um, something of that nature. Um, this has been uh, a great EDC that I really, really dig, really enjoy. Um, and, of course, with that S90V, uh, you know, you can put that one to work for a long time, and it's not going to need sharpening for a while. So that's a really, really great option right there. Last but certainly not least, and this is one that I'm probably going to do a more in-depth video on, um, because this knife has been in my pocket more than any other, um, simply because I wanted to do it justice, testing it out and seeing how it fared, especially for its price point. Because, um, if it's going to be a knife that's going to be this expensive, I wanted to make sure that it was something that, um, I could really put through its paces and not ever worry about it. And I tell you what, um, it has surpassed every expectation that I ever had for it. Um, and that is going to be the Tour Alpha XT1 right here. Uh, this thing is super awesome. I absolutely love this design. I love this knife. And this is another one that uh, I have not been friendly to. Um, I have put this knife through its paces, and uh, I absolutely love this knife. It carries well. It's it's a very heavy duty, um, very I would say uh, military heavy duty type knife. Um, I love its construction. It's very sturdy, all titanium construction with an S thirty five VN blade. Um, great action, super smooth. Um, and I can, it, it's very fidgety as well. I can sit there in the car. And, uh, one thing that I always end up doing is, um, and one thing that bothers me with a lot of frame locks is a lot of times I will, um, flick it out there too hard. And then the frame lock will bind up and be tough to unlock not the case with this one. I've never had to add any graphite or anything to this frame lock to keep it from sticking. Um, it never sticks. And, um, it's just a phenomenally well 
built knife. And uh, we're going to go over the, the specs of this one right here. So this one, we are actually just getting up on our website now. Um, so you guys will be the first to have a chance at it. Now this is going to be 6AL4V on the bead blasted titanium uh, handle right there. And um, incredibly ergonomic shape. And uh, I talked with the guys from Tor about this and how much I really enjoy this knife because not only is it very ergonomic when it comes to holding it normally like you're going to use a pocket knife, um, and I like the belly on it. I think this would make a great skinner. It would make a great hunting knife. Um, in fact, I might find that out this coming up hunting season. Um, I'm looking forward to putting this thing through, you know, some some decent work. But also, um, if you pull this knife in a defensive situation, and I've covered it up with this lanyard, and I've talked about this, but the on the outside of that lanyard tube is going to be... Um, nice fairly aggressive jimping and it makes for a nice index point for your thumb um, so that you know where that's at and you you can feel it and you don't have to look for it but it also is another point of giving you nice control over this knife if using it in a defensive situation or for a defensive purpose and I really dig that I dig um, the thought that went in behind that also going to be titanium on the hardware. So all of the screws, um, the pins, all of that is going to be titanium as well. And, uh, I love that. Um, nice thick blade stock going to be acid etching on the blade. And, uh, this one's coming in at 475. That blade size is going to be 3.25 inches on that recurve blade, 7.25 inches overall. Um, so not, you know, overly long, not, you know, unwieldy S 35 VN on the blade steel with that acid stone wash blasted titanium. Um, and then the back spacer is going to be that black coated titanium and it weighs just 5.6 ounces, 5.6 ounces for a nice full size EDC right there. Um, absolutely dig this thing. And I tell you what, this baby right here is a workhorse and it's going to be uh, one of those in that category of uh, definitely overbuilt folders, um, but for a good reason. And um, I really, really dig that knife right there. It's been one of my favorite lately. Um, so let us know what you think down in the comments below. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a more in-depth review of this knife uh, in, in the upcoming weeks. Um, since I've been able to put it through its paces and actually use this thing for a lot of, a lot of hard work. So, um, let us know what you think about all of these knives in the comments down below. These have been the five that have found their way into my pocket more than any other knives that I own. And I have a, you know, it, it's, it's hard to stay away from knives when you work here. And so I have a, I have acquired a lot of different knives. I have a vast collection these are the five knives that have found their way into my pocket more than any others recently. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you have any questions at all, let us know about that too. Folks, as always, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And remember, if it cuts like an EDC, then we carry it. Shut up. But I'm the shoom, Grandpa. Tell me about the good old days. Sometimes it seems like the world's gone. Who's gonna give us a copyright strike? She's. Is it actually Bob this time? Yes, it is.